Alright, so this is Estimated Inversion Control um, with myself and our lovely treasurer here, Andrew. Um, so what is version control and why? Um, well, essentially you use version control for two or three main things. First is collaboration and merging. So if you are working with maybe one other developer or a hundred other developers on one big piece of software or project, then you all use version control together and check in your changes and it merges them all together and you have a working application. Um, and yeah, like the slide says, the version will actually, two of you change the same file and then check it in and it should intelligently merge them. Um, yeah, in theory. <laughs> and then um, the second thing is to track and maintain all changes. So even if you're the only developer, you set up version control on your computer. Um, and if you periodically check in your changes, um, then if in the future you need to roll back to a previous you know, state in your application, you can go ahead and do that. You can revert to a previous time. Um, there's also branching, which, um, as this says, is the ability to isolate changes under a separate line of development. Um, so essentially, when, why would you branch? Well, you branch off the main development line or trunk whenever you want to like add a complicated feature or change in case it doesn't work or whatever, it's like an experimental branch. Or if you want to have a development build and a stable build, like there's, for example, those of you use Firefox, they're very public on their development project, and um, you know there's the, the stable 3.0 right now, right, is the, is the latest Firefox, but there's also 3.1 in development, there's another version, and those are using a lot of the same files, but there's also changes, so you would have, you'd, brand, you'd make a branch for each line of development you're doing. Um, and similarly here, I mean, uh, for example, PHP, there's version 4, version 5, um, and you, they don't develop version 4 anymore, but they bug fix it, so those might be different branches of the PHP tree. Well, maybe not, but in theory. So. Um, there's also tagging, which um, you can, do you want to talk about tagging? <laughs> um, so tagging is the ability to, uh, branching and tagging are sort of the same thing. Can I yes. maybe draw a diagram? Oh, nobody's going to be able to see that. Um, so, I could do that. Okay. <laughs> um, so, tagging is the ability to associate some sort of metadata with uh, a particular release. So, if you commit something as your initial import, uh, you have revision one. And then you move along, you change something, commit, revision two, you go on. Uh, all of a sudden, these are, these are called revision numbers. So you can add a tag, say you're at revision 376, or 4 million, I, I don't know. Um, and you can tag say, hey, I want this to be called release version 1.0 of my software. So that way, if you're in the future and you've got a customer, or if you want to go back to say, hey, what were things like at version 1.0, you can say, oh, hey, instead of remembering I need revision 12, I can say, oh, okay, I want revision 1.0. And then you can also, branching and tagging are kind of the same thing, I believe. It's branching is essentially a tag on every single, <laughs> um, every single revision. So, yeah, again, maybe maybe you are ready to release version 2 of your software, but not quite, so you go back and fix the bugs and we'll just have a version, whatever. So, um, SPN itself, um, well, I call it SVN because when you're using it in the command line, you type SVN. But it's also called Subversion, like I guess is the real name. So uh, what, what Subversion is, is a successor to a previous version control system called CVS, or Concurrent Version System. Has anyone ever used CVS? Yeah. It's absolutely terrible. Well, I mean, let's let him there and say that. But <laughs> I haven't used it myself. But I mean, there are problems with CVX, um, and then Subversion deals with a lot of them. For example, um, correct me if I'm wrong, the CBS would not have atomic commits. Um, so what happens, who's familiar with the term atomic? As far as, as, far as computer program, a uh, handful of you. For those of you who don't know what atomic is, it means that when you make a change, if it fails in the middle, nothing's affected, but um, at the very end of, of a successful completion, it takes effect. So this is a big deal in like file systems and um, databases, mostly. Um, if you have a transaction that fails in the middle, um, you know, if it, 
you don't have an atomic database that might mess up your database. So Subversion, just, just for a piece of technical information, Subversion is able to be hosted on two different backends, per se. Um, there's, there's one on... <laughs> the back? No, I'm sorry. Oh, the there's, database. There's one on, uh, hosted on Berkeley Databases, version 4, and then there's one on something called FSFS, which is Subversion's proprietary file system. And often what happens in the case of CBS is when you're in the middle of committing and say you get a network interrupt, or uh, user hits, well, sometimes it works if user hits cancel. Um, but typically things would happen um, over the transfer and uh, your database, what happens is it puts a lock on it and then it writes the data into the database and undoes the lock. Well, lots of times those locks become stale, meaning there's no longer a transaction in the database. So Subversion's so kind of fixed that with their latest uh, thing, which is, Ever since version 1.2, now the new default is FSFS, and we're at 1.5 right now. So, um. also, um, the, you have like a revision history for each file as well as the whole project, and that survives things like file names or moves and deletion, which is pretty cool. Uh, and this is actually really cool. So, with Subversion, you know, it's kind of like a, a, a backup of every single state of your application, right? Every time you check it, it creates a new copy in, in theory. So, if it doesn't really store a new copy of the file, it stores the changes, which are called you know, differentials. Um, so, that really keeps file sizes down. And what's cool about Subversion is it does that on binaries as well. So, for example, um, well, some databases are stored as binary, right? Yeah, so for example, if you have a database that's part of the application, and you change it just a little bit, instead of storing a whole new copy of the database, they'll just throw the changes. It's pretty cool. Um, branching and tagging are cheap. I was thinking it doesn't result in like a whole new file, just the changes. Um, you can lock things if you want to for like administrative reasons, or you know, if, for example, in a big corporation, it'll be a big deal. Um, this is actually kind of cool too. Um, PHP, Pro, Python, and Java all have bindings for SBN, so um, that means if you want to programmatically do some sort of checking in or... So as an example for that, what happens is uh, typically you have, before you commit and after you commit, you have pre-commit hooks and post-commit hooks. So you can have something that executes uh, before something is checked in. For example, you want to make sure the user has entered a certain type of information in the log message, or if it has a log message, uh, or uh, post-commit, is after the commit executes. So maybe you want to say, maybe you have, uh, um, say, a copy of the database uh, in a different directory for a different, for purposes. Or maybe after you check in, then it like, yeah. automatically compiles the test for things. Yeah, like that. yeah. Um, and a lot of co uh, companies actually will not let you check in if your thing does not compile, uh, if, if it's code. Um, and that's that's kind of uh, kind that's of an cool. interesting thing to yeah. do that. But cool. these language bindings. Um, allow you to, notice they're all scripted, I don't think you can do it in C. Um, these language bindings allow you to uh, write those those hooks, and uh, I think you can actually, actually do it in uh, shell scripting too. But, uh, and it does other little things too that matter when you get into it, but I don't think we really need to talk about yeah. it. Also, just a side note, think about checking in things that break the code. Um, yeah, that could be bad. But um, where it works for the summer as an intern, if you broke the build, then you'd have to buy everything from Tim Hutz. <laughs> <So, laughs> there's like 50 developers too in the group, so that's a lot of things. 